conversation. It won't be a uh, back and forth question and answer thing. I'm going to let him tell his story. And uh, we just going to wrap today. Hey, how you doing, Fleece? Doing all right. Everything all right with you? So far. So far? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're here. Uh, man, let's get, let's get right into it. Man, what was the young fleece like? When did you get started? Where was you born? And uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Well, I was born in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, West End of Louisville. Projects called Southwick. Works as most violent projects in Louisville. And I live right across the street from the school, Duval. Yeah, my... Uh my parents went to Duval. Uh, what about uh, when did you when when did the minutes come out? Cause you you got started well, pretty early. Yeah, my minutes came out. Yeah, early. I said I was about I was about twelve when it came out. What well, What was your first crime? Well, my first crime was uh, stealing a car. At twelve? Yeah. Wow. You weren't playing. No, nah, I wasn't. And I used to steal cars. I had a little gang. And we steal cars, and we'd go mess with the police. You know, i drive right up to the parking lot when they change shift, run into one of them, cuss them, make them chase us. And we had a position where we would take them through the alley to initiate to get in our gang. You would have to do this, bring the police through the alley, and we'd be sitting on the cut. And when we see your car drum up out of the alley, we know they right in the back of you. So when they come out of the alley, we'll hit them, flip them, flip their cars and shit. So this went on for quite a while, man, and the police caught all my little gang members, and they all told on me. And so now they want to get me. So, But they could never catch me because I was too good. You know, at least I thought I was, right? Right. And then one night on 30, uh, 34th Street, they blocked the whole street off in a U, just a, a, a horseshoe, right? And uh, it was about 30, 40 police cars out there, and all of them just opened up, start shooting. Wow. And uh, they thought they killed me. And an ambulance was already there, and the people in the projects came out, they heard all the gunshots and stuff. So the police told me, he said, if it wasn't for your nigga friend, we would have killed your black ass. So I spit on him in the back of the police car. Well, he went for his gun, and the other police that was driving took his hand off the starting wheel to try to stop him. And we on Broadway, and the car's going like that. And so they called back up, and they took me out of there and put me in another police car. Like, right? well, I went to the children detention at the time. Was it JCYC? No. It wasn't? No. Mm, this children center, that's okay. what they call it. And, uh, my mom could have got me out that same day, but she said she's going to let me stay there for the night. So the next day we get out. So the Courier Journal newspaper, the leading newspaper in Louisville, in uh, Kentucky mainly, they put that on the front page uh, at shooting right there. So we could have got some money over there. But my daddy, he wants to go up to the police station Tell him that uh, he ain't going to file no lawsuit, that he taught me a lesson and all that. He was just talking stupid, and I just got up and ran up out of the, the little office room, came outside, two police was talking, and one of them's car was stolen, and I jumped and stole it right there in the dirt, right? Stole the police car, right? Right. And I'm known for doing a lot of stuff, and I started carrying pistols when I was 13, two of them, 45. Nickel plated. I had twins. And uh, so I robbed everybody. I robbed crap gangs, dope fiends, prostitutes, faggots, sissies, uh, you name it. 
I was noted for it. I was the most frail young person in Louisville at that time. You know, and I ain't have no frail to police, right? And uh, as a matter of fact, another thing they document you, I had a cousin called John Sanders. And in the projects of Colin Holmes, I'm driving through there in a stolen car. They got him spread eagle on the ground like this, you know, making him, you know, it's shameful. I got out of the car, drew on the police, took their weapons, got my cousin up out of the street, and we took off. That's the type of person I was, right? So I was such a menace that when they found it caught up to me, they said, we're going to send him to the penitentiary. You know, I got locked up for 16 robberies, eight shooting and wounded, and a car theft. So in a plea agreement, I took 12 years. At 16 years old? No, I was 15. At 15? Yeah, I was 15, and they sent me to the penitentiary. Even though back then, they had a law back then that juveniles can't go to a duck prison, they sent me. They say, fuck that law, they sent me. So, when I get to prison, the same newspaper, Courier Journal, they came down to interview me my first day there. The headline read, 16-year-old prisoner wants to get out and go straight. That's the headline. Mm -hmm. So, and they still got that headlines in the career, John. I had a friend that she had to pay $15, 20 to get it, you know, but they still got it on file. So, when I hit prison, you know, I see a lot of people out of robbed and stuff, and they talking shit. Oh, this is going to be a good day. Look who they just brought in. But what they didn't realize, I had two brothers locked up, two cousins, and a uh, handful of just die hard gangster niggas, you know. Yeah. So I started fighting down there, and my brothers, they run all up to my brothers, tell your little brother this and that, for we hurt him, my brother, like you ain't gonna do shit to him, you know. And so I fought and fought. And they had this dude down there named Reggie, big old. I'm talking about, you know, back then they was wearing afros. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker had a big ass chest. His chest was so big that he can put a can good on his chest and level it. It stuck out so tight, <laughs> you know. And every time I go take a shower, this nigga would come in the shower behind me. All them muscles and all that shit. I ain't have no muscle, you know. And he used to stare at me, you know, I look over at him, this nigga was washing up, staring right at me. So I'm like, you know, I tell my little partners and shit, what's wrong with this nigga? Just keep staring at me and shit, right? How old are you at this time? 16. Wow. This nigga here is in his 30s. Hmm. You know, and uh, I'm a child, you know, and I guess he thought he had some fresh meat, you know. So, one day, you know, this went on and on. I ain't never say nothing to him about it. To be truthful, I was sort of like afraid of this nigga. For real. This nigga was just huge, man. I just said, God damn. I can't do nothing with this nigga here, man. Just ignore him, right? But one day, he came out of the shower and brushed against me naked and said, excuse me, but I know the nigga did it on purpose, right? So I said, okay, that's it. So they had glass paint jobs that they sold to inmates out of commissary. So I went back there and took a paint job, dumped the shit out and broke it. I come back in that motherfucking bathroom. He said uh, he was going to the store that day and asked me if he can pick me something up from the stuff. Nigga, you don't know me like that. So I already know what you done already brushed up against me naked. I felt your goddamn dick hit my side of my leg, right? All that excuse me shit 
come on, bro. I took that motherfucking tank job and I said, I, man, I cut the fuck out of this nigga. This nigga ran, I'm right in the back of him, cutting him, slicing him, everything. When I broke the glass, it, it had points on it. And, uh, yeah. And so, because I did that, the guards and the administration back in, they said, look, you think you a tough little son of a bitch. We gonna send you somewhere, motherfucker. And we gonna see how tough you are. So they sent me to Eddieville, the maximum security penitentiary. Eddieville. Yeah, when I get down there, uh, here's what got me about that prison. When I come on the yard, man, I'm 17. All these people in there is in their 40s and 50s and 30s. I'm a child, the only young child in there. Man, I was walking across the loop, going towards the property room. I see all these motherfuckers laying out kissing and shit, right? And back then, Eddieville didn't have a dress code. You could, we, we can wear our own clothes then. The sisters can come out with thongs and bikinis and panties and all this shit, you know? And motherfuckers were laying around kissing and shit. So I'm like, what the fuck they got me at, man? You know? And, uh, so everybody stirred at me, and I kept hearing the word nigga, nigga this, nigga that. I said, man, all these blacks down there, and they tolerating this shit. I said, man, the first time one of them called me a nigga, I'm going to show them what type of nigga I really am, right? I'm a bad-ass nigga, you know. And so I ignored it. And the second day, I get in the fight right there in the kitchen. They had some old bullshit out that, uh, can't nobody eat cheese. If you eat cheese, you a rat. They had that bullshit out then. And people come through the dining hall. They have hamburgers on. You can, you know, put cheese on. Wouldn't nobody get the cheese. So I told the man, I said, I ain't know nothing about this shit. So I said, uh, can I get some cheese? He gave me a whole block of it. He said, yes, you can. So when I sent it at the table, my trade, my friend from, uh, LaGrange, the other prison, he said, man, get that off your table, man. You eat that shit, everybody gonna think you're a red. I said, fuck them. I mean, eat what the fuck I want to eat. Not dare one of them call me that. And I heard a table, somebody kept saying, red, red, red. I said, who the fuck is saying that? So I looked over and seen a group of white guys looking right at me. And when, when I seen that red come out of his mouth, I just went over and, 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 and just swung on the whole table. Everybody. So I went to the hole. So the guards and them thought this was going to, like the white guards, they was racist. So they said, we're going to put you back. You know, we went in front of the Justice Committee. They said, we're going to let you out of the hole. And I guess they thought I wasn't going to come back out. And yeah, I came out and it was an old black man. He said, I don't know who you are. I mind what you did. I'm too old to fight. He said, but take this. You don't need it. He gave me a butcher knife. I took it, and I seen that same group of white boys that I swung on come down the step. Coming, I already know they coming from me, right? So I just took off running straight towards them with the knife in my hand. I said, fuck it. You know, they might kill me, but I'm taking some motherfuckers out with me. So you doing this at 17, 18 years old? Yeah, I ran straight towards them. And then when I got almost up on them, they was hollering, hey, yo, yo, ho, slow down, bro. Slow down, man. We ain't come to fight. They say, man, we don't know who put that shit out, man, but I've been eating cheese all my life. I ain't no goddamn rat, this and that. So it was the first situation I had to go into straight now. That's when my name got established. So now they gonna put me in a cell. So they know who Fleece is at that point. Yeah. So so they put me in a cell with this big old black motherfucker. They call him Doc, Big Doc. Boy, this motherfucker look like shit. King Kong or some motherfucker. <laughs> he had a big old his nose was about the size of my fist. He had a big old nose. Red eyes, and he was a big motherfucker with big fangles and shit. He just looked like he was just made to fight, yeah. you know, like a gladiator type motherfucker. So 
I'm in a cell with him. They had double cells then. I stopped that long. I'll tell you about that. Mm -hmm. Well, this motherfucker, that's the one I was telling people about it. He had that hole in the wall. Yeah, that was to uh, trick the... The yeah, younger people, right? Yeah, go go ahead, yeah, go ahead and tell us about that, cause yeah, he had a hole in his wall. See what he did? It was a hole in his wall. So he took a little balloon thing and put some baby powder in it and blowed it up to where it swelled up. So he pressed it into the hole, stuck it in her, and then took a sheet of paper and put some cement on, it. and when it hardened. He taped it over the hole and then painted over it where it looked like, you know, the regular wall and shit. Like, I didn't know the shit was there. Mm -hmm. So he started talking crazy and shit. He got a fuck something, all this old shit. He got a what? Fuck something. Oh, okay, he trying to get somebody to mess you know, with. Nah, he was trying to fuck me. So <laughs> that's what his mind was all right. He was trying to fuck me, right? Yeah. So about that time, the door opened. We went out for child, right? So I was telling some of my friends out there, man, this big black motherfucker. And so they gave me a little knife, a little little knife. Because the, the butcher knife I used on the other incident, I had to get rid of that because if they caught me with it, they was going to charge me with it, you know, uh, uh, outside charge. Mm -hmm. So I got another knife. So I went back in the the thing, so this nigga put on a pair of shorts that had a lot of holes in it. Whenever he walked, his shit would pop out of one of the holes, right? And he would put it back in his drawers. And I'm like, I said, this is a nasty ass nigga right here. But I ain't gonna lie, I was, I was afraid. I, I was actually afraid. And then when that nigga uh, sounded off and hit that damn wall, and his arm went through there and bust that thing and it made a big old boom on like, mm -hmm. like he knocked the bricks out of the goddamn wall, right? And all this shit was floating in the air. I didn't know it was baby powder. I thought it was fragments of cement. Right. You know, the dust. You thought his fist was that Yeah, arm. and his arm was white and shit. And I was like, and he run up on me. Nigga, do I gotta fight you, nigga? Nigga! Ah. I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> The fuck I'm going to do? This nigga give, give him some good ass, right? <laughs> and uh, I wasn't thinking about fighting. I was like, man, if I'm going to let this nigga penetrate me, man, you know, and he made one mistake. Because when I moved that little knife, because I already had that knife, it stuck my leg, right? Mm -hmm. And brought me back to my senses. Nigga, you got a knife right here. Man, I gripped that mother. I'm left-handed, but I gripped that with my right hand, right? Because mm. it was sitting on my right side. Right. And I ain't had time to switch it over to the left, right? Mm -hmm. So I just came up with it, slap, and just ripped all that open, right? Up uh, It cut him good, right? He ran to the door. God, God. So I ran him back up and hit his ankles and shit, right? Mm -hmm. Brought him down to the ground. And I stabbed the shit out of him, right? Mm -hmm. And then when the guards finally came up to him, to the cell, they was telling me I done backed all the way up to the back the, by the toilet, and they like it's gonna be all right. Just put the put the put the knife down, put it down. I was shaking and everything, man, right. blood everywhere. Well, I finally gave them the knife. They took this nasty nigga and they transferred him. I don't know if he died or what. I went to the hole, and they did the same thing, let me out. They ain't even give me an outside charge for that, because they know what type of motherfucker he was. He was, he was one of them types. Right. right. So then everything started going good. You know, people start thinking twice before they tried me and I, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, they looked at me like I was the only black person in her they would fight back. I mean, really fight back. And so I hear the thing, man. Uh, I kept seeing these sissies. I flee. So, so now you you seeing men in thongs and swimming suits and all that. What what yeah. was that about? Well, the prison. If you really look at it, 
I mean, it's common sense. If you go to a woman's prison, the person that is running that prison is the dykes. They run, they, they the one that whooped the girl. And Eddieville was the same way back then. It was mostly populated with this gay shit, you know. And these sisters had so much power where if if you spoke bad to one of them, they kill you and I. You had to. Who, who would kill you? The inmates, they husbands and boyfriends and all the gay motherfuckers, right? Mm. And so you got to address them as like you would address a woman. Ma'am, miss. Yeah, ma'am, miss. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, and all this shit, right? Mm. Uh, and call call them a, a she. How and, old are you at this time? I'm still 17 when all this is going on, man. And I'm just now getting, you know, so I said, man, fuck your shit, right? So I started disliking all that shit, mm -hmm. you know. And, but they had one that come in on. I'm talking about this motherfucker's ass was so fat. And he was, this, this is like a motherfucker's, <laughs> like your baby mama. That motherfucker's ass was fat, ungodly fat, right? Right. And he gets in the shower with me. And we was the only two in the shower. And uh, I turned around, and I seen that soap going down his back through the crack of his eyes. I said, God damn. <laughs> and I knew I had a problem right there, right? Yeah. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. I said, fuck this shit, man. I ain't, I ain't cut like that. But man. you hadn't done nothing, man. I ain't done shit. Okay. And so, it's what uh, I said about, about eight to ten years in, you know, motherfucker get tired of all that jacking off shit. You know, and being that I came in so early, I didn't have no memories of girls that I don't fuck because I ain't even had a woman yet. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was in jail at 14. I ain't even fuck with a woman yet. You right. know, ain't never kissed one, none of that shit. Now that I'm in the penitentiary around all this shit, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you switch from masturbating to looking at freak magazines, mm -hmm. you know, porn magazines. Right. So that was the big thing, you know, but you get bored on that shit. You, you get burnt out on it, you know. And then, you know, you, something got to give, man. So you, were, you wasn't... You wasn't necessarily gay when you went in because you, no. you didn't even like seeing it at first. No, I wasn't gay, period. Okay. You know, when I went in that motherfucker, I hated that shit. Right. You know, I hated the sight of it, you know. And when I used to rob them on the streets and shit, right, I used to smack them all that shit, right. Mm -hmm. and I remember when I got, got locked up in jail before I went to prison, all them sisters was, I was 30 years. 30 years, that's that motherfucker that robbed us on the street, all that shit. And uh, now I'm back to the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. Man, you see so much shit going on in there. It's like a different environment, a different community. You know, it's like a different world for real. And everybody was into it. They was uh, kissing, they allowed it back then. Mm. And we had a swimming pool in, in that prison. You had a swimming pool Man, in prison? This is a maximum security prison, one of the toughest in America, and we had a pool. We had a swimming pool, we had go karts, roller skates, indoor and outdoor, all that shit. Wow. See, the correction cabinet in Kentucky, they didn't want to put us to the strict shit that other prisons in other states put their prisoners through, right? Right. They felt like this is our community. As long as we respect it, they gonna give us privileges. You know, roller skates, we got a swimming pool, we got a, a, a real softball court, baseball, football field. We had a, a basketball full court inside of a gym 
We had one out five, we had another one out five, we had another, we had four full court basketball. I mean, we had it all that shit, right? So, but here's what they did. They used to have something they call salt peter. That's what they put in your food, right? Soft peter? Yeah, it's supposed to uh, produce something in you where you can't get hard. Okay. Keep your shit soft. But if you put too much in a, it'll have the reverse effect. You know, it'll make everybody hard. Uh, so the inmates that worked in the kitchen called themselves like playing jokes and shit. Most of them was gay, so they wanted to see that shit. Mm -hmm. So they would put a lot of it in the food. Wow. And you wake, you walk around all day long hard and shit, looking at each other. Everybody want to stir each other down and shit. You know. Like, who's going to give it up? Give what up? I mean, goddamn. I mean, we all sat here and hoard and motherfuckers, whoever got the fattest ass, I guess, you right. know. Fuck, that, that didn't really resonate to me, and I'm going to keep it real, 100, though. After about 10 years in, man, I'm, I'm burnt out on jack, or masturbating, jacking off, or reading, looking at free books. So, by that time, my reputation in her done picked up, right? I done fought so many battles and fights and stuff, and I ain't lost shit. Mm -hmm. I ain't lose one fight in her, none. You know, I fought inmates, I fought the racist motherfuckers, I fought all the clique. You know, all that crip and blood and GDs, all that shit went on the streets when I was grass out. But while I was locked up, all that stuff started coming in the prison. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they start uh, taking away our privileges because these young motherfuckers will come in, start their bullshit. Everybody in blue want to fight everybody in red. Now it's a prison rat. Mm -hmm. So they took all of our clothes, took our shoes, took, started taking all our shit. You know, so I said, shit, fuck it. You know, I got a little life in this motherfucker. You know, so I seen one of them running his mouth. Light skin motherfucker. He was out of Newburgh in Louisville. Mm -hmm. And at last, talk about how tough he was and shit, right? And so, I one day I went to the shower and him and his little road dog, they came in the shower. They talking about whooping somebody and all <laughs> that shit. But when I turned around and looked and see who was doing all that talking, I saw him. Mm -hmm. Man, his ass was so fat. I said, God damn. <laughs> he need to give that ass up. What is he talking about fighting who, nigga? You need to give somebody some booty, nigga. And uh, so I ain't say nothing to him right then and there, right? Mm -hmm. But we knew. We knew all that shit was just talk, right? Right. Most of them coming on that gangster shit, man, they ain't gangsters for real, bro. They ain't gangsters for real. It's a shield. Mm -hmm. It's a shield. When you see people acting tough for no reason. Protection, right? like a protection mechanism. Yeah, yeah, it's a protection mechanism. It's like they erected a shield. Mm -hmm. like, so the only thing you can see is what they're talking. Mm -hmm. You can't see what's behind it, right? right. And as you bust through that motherfucking shield, you'll see who's behind it. A, a cow, a gay motherfucker. You ain't got your guns in there, bro. Right. You know? And you try to click up with motherfuckers, and if they ain't got your back, you on your own. You know, and when you break down the clicks and, and get a motherfucker on his own, you can just walk up to him. And taking ass in prison, let me tell you, they give it up. Don't nobody take shit. You ain't got to take nothing. You ain't got to take shit. You can just break through that little... A little shield they got up, all that tough talk shit. Break through that. It's something they want to do, man. They want to give it up. Wow. You know, and I, done, I started picking up time and shit, and I went down with 12 years and picked up 40. Yeah, we're we going to get into that because I, I think that's pretty wild. You had a 12-year beard and ended up doing 40. All right, Fleece, now, now you, uh, you, you're you about 10, 10 years in, so you're in your mid-20s, and uh, 
Now, now, what's going on in your life in prison at this point? Well, as the first thing that goes on in people's lives in prison is the people on the streets, your loved ones and your family. Turn their back on you, bro. Stop sending you money. Don't come to visit you. You just like on your own. Don't nobody want to fuck with you, you know. And I'm like, fuck them. I don't need them anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So prison is just like the streets, you know, in a certain way because we got to live in there and survive and people get robbed in there all the time. If you got money, you better know how to fight. If you don't know how to fight, somebody going to take your money and take your ass and all that with it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I started running shit. You know? uh, let me let me ask you, I don't mean to interrupt you, let me ask you a question real quick because you said, because it's been it's been said that you was taking ass, and you just said and right, now you don't right. have to take no ass. No, nah, you don't have to take shit. Motherfuckers give you ass, man. Now, I'm, I'm gonna ask everybody to listen to this shit. Now I'm gonna ask you this: What is the big fucking difference? A ass is ass in my book. You know. In, in your book, because of where you are at the time. No, no, uh, period. 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 <laughs> All the streets in prison, ass is ass, you know, to me. You know, ass is ass, bro. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you like, out here in, in, in society, mm -hmm. you got a lot of women out here. Right. You know, and motherfuckers don't need to go that route. You know, you got ladies out here, you got motherfuckers out here, you can fuck for, uh, a bird, <laughs> two dollars, ten dollars, shit like that. Right. You never need to go do anything, you know. But in the penitentiary, mm -hmm. how many people you know is strong enough? You know, you got a lot of fake motherfuckers that sit there and tell you a lot of shit about, man, I did thirty years or forty years or twenty something years, and ain't nothing. I ain't never did. He's a he's lying. That's a goddamn lie. It, it was said again. I'm sorry. He, he you did. Got, you got people that get out of prison that done did a lot of prison time. Mm -hmm. Over 15 years. And they try to tell people right, when they get out, yeah, man, I I, I was strong. You know, man, I held up. He, he's lying like shit. He didn't do shit. But what everybody else did in the penitentiary. They sneak around, get their dick sucked, fuck somebody in the ass, buy ass. They they sell ass and our uh, them sisters and our sells it. You know, just like prostitutes do on the streets. And them sisters and our look like women. Behave like them, conduct themselves like them, talk like them, and they have all the women traits. You know, they have the big hips, the big butts, the small waistlines. Some of them got titties. You know, and some of them is just think they was uh, women. And it's hard for a motherfucker that been in for a long time to see them keep walking back and forth past your cell with all their booty hanging out and shit, not trying to get none, you know. Right. And so, in our, it's like it is on the street, whoever got the most money can get whatever the fuck he wants in the penitentiary. You gotta have money to get it. That's why I ran stores, poker games. I did all kinds of shit, right? And I accumulated a lot of money in our life. Right? You started doing this in your mid-20s to late 20s? No, nah, I was in my 30s when I started making all that money. Okay. And uh, I, I put my nieces and nephews through college. So at that point, you accept you was going to be there for the rest of your yeah, life? Yeah, yeah. I done picked up so much time, I said I ain't going to never get out because I ain't going to never accept no disrespect. I'm not going to let no motherfucker disrespect me and and just pat them on the back. No, I'm going to fuck your ass up, right? All right. And so one guy, he owed me, you know. He thought he was slick. You know, like in Penitentiary, he owed me. Well, he, he bought a pack of cigarettes. So, he got to pay two back. Two so, packs back? Yeah, for, uh, you know, give him a week. Give him on a Friday. Always pay on Fridays. Mm -hmm. 
Come Friday, he said his money didn't get come in, so the two went to three as interest. So when he didn't pay it the next week, the three went to five, and the five to eight on up. And eventually, this motherfucker owed me eight boxes of cigarettes. Then his money finally came, you know. So he gonna try to shortcut me. You know, he gonna give me four boxes of cigarettes. I said, hey, bro, you owe me eight. I know I owe you, and I don't know what else to do. I said, well, I'm gonna tell you what to do. Pay me my goddamn money. You know, pay me my goddamn money. And I looked at him real hard, like, you know, yeah. He said, I, I said, yeah, I am, sir. Pay me my money, I'll give me some ass. You know, he said, I don't play that shit. I don't do that. I don't do this. And I said, all right, bro. Well, I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow then. He already know what that means. You know, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So before we came out of our sales, the next day, he sent the note down on him. And in the note, he said, do you know a place where we can go, where we can do it, where we won't get caught? Wow. Well. And I'm going to keep it real with you. I fucked the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, I did. I fucked his ass, and I felt good about it, right? I fucked him. Fucked him hard. You know, hard. And this was a man that wasn't even doing This it. was a motherfucker that claimed he wasn't gay, he didn't do shit, he wasn't like it, but he owed me. Pay me, motherfucker. You know, he gave me some booty. So I said, God damn, that was good. It was good, good ass right there. So I'm living my life in the penitentiary. You know, I'm never getting back out. That's what I thought. I'm never going back to the street, so I might as well make a life of this. I'm getting me a motherfucking wife in this motherfucker, you know. Yeah, you going into, what, 20 years in at this point? Yeah, yeah, I need me a goddamn wife or something. I need a motherfucker to suck my dick on the regular. I need fuck ass, whatever, jack me off, whatever you want to do. And if you want to consider that something wrong to do, then don't get on me, get on the mall maker. Because they the motherfuckers that put motherfuckers in these penitentiaries, all males and all females in the same, you know, just separators. You know, and the Bible says, in the beginning when God created man, the, what made God create the woman? You, you go back to the beginning of the Bible, it'll say, it is not good that a man should be alone. Why ain't it good? Well, I just told you why. Because if you ain't got, uh, they, they gonna fuck each other. Somebody, motherfuckers dicks get hard, they fucking. It's as simple as that, fucking. So, people like, look at, look at it like, ah, it's nasty. Now it's life. And if you was locked up, you'd be doing the same shit. I don't give a fuck who you are listening to this shit. If you was locked up after you get in about eight to ten years in that motherfucker, yeah, you gonna get your dick sucked on the slick side. It was a whole lot of these little gangsters in Louisville that was trying to sneak around doing shit, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Fleece. So it's a whole lot of little tough guys come out of my city, Louisville. They come in there and try to, you know, these is flat niggas. These is niggas that hit all the women on the streets and shit, right? Well, here's the thing you ain't realizing. And, and all you young motherfuckers out there fucking, keep this in your mind. That same sex drive you hit on the streets, well, you just got to fuck all the time. You fuck this girl, go across town, fuck another girl, fuck your bad friend's girl, and all this shit. That same sex drive will go with you when you get locked up, brother. And that urge to have sex, that urge to come, to, to, to get that feeling, that sexual release, that goes with you. That don't stop at the prison gate. That goes in there with you. You know, and a lot of them in there, they turn to 
they follow ladies around the yard all day long, jacking off on them and, and hiding and, and all this. They call them butt bandits, booty bandits and all this shit. They got over 150 motherfuckers in Eddieville. They come out of their cell every day looking for one thing, booty. They don't want no goddamn food, canteen, or nothing. They want ass. That's what they come out looking for. And if they find any weakness in you, they, could, they come to get it. They don't give a fuck how you look. So people, so these young people come in with these real high sex drives and shit. So one dude, I, I, I got tired of hearing his mouth. He was talking about these nasty ass sissies down there. That's all they got down there, sissies and all this shit. Little pretty motherfucker. You know, it's one of them type of niggas on the street. All the ladies would say, ooh, he's so cute. And all, yeah, niggas in prison say he's cute too. He's a baby doll. <laughs> you know, niggas a baby doll in prison. <laughs> the cute nigga on the street is a baby doll in us. <laughs> And every woman, all you ladies out here that have a man, you know if your man got a fat ass or not. You know, let that go through your mind. Do your, do he have a little fat ass or, <laughs> or, or what? So when they get him, so I got to hear him do run his mouth so bad. Mm -hmm. And I know I already fuck one of these motherfuckers, right? A couple of them at that time, right? Yeah. So I'm offended, right? So I tell a sissy, I say, look, I'll pay you. See what he's about, right? About two months later, sissy came back and told me, said, guess what? I said, what? I said, we, we kissed. I said, you kissed too? And, and when he told me, I said, oh, little gangster nigga, talking all this shit? But yeah, I said, all right, keep me posted. Next thing you know, he gave the sissy some head. Then sissy said he was fucking so I'm like, hold up. I got to see this with my own eyes. Like, can you set it up? Where I can walk in with a crowd of niggas from Louisville mm -hmm. and bust this motherfucker, right? Catch him right in the ass. And we did. And that sissy was hammering in his ass. I'm talking about he was throwing log in him, bro. <laughs> You know, you think a motherfucker's a sissy, he ain't got no, these motherfuckers had dicks bigger than ours, right? And uh, sissy would turn that ass up and I would just turn his butt up. And, and we, I called him, I, and I dramatized it. I said, oh, God damn. <laughs> God damn. What's that, a tree trunk coming out of your ass, nigga? <laughs> and uh, so later on, he came to sit down and tell his dad, can I talk to you? I said, yes, what's up, man? He said, hey, police. Man, I know you thought you saw what you, I said, look, bitch, don't even come to me with that shit. I saw you take a dick in your ass, you a bitch, and it's all to it. You a bitch. So, you know, that happens a lot, and it's a lot of them. It's, it's, it's up in the hundreds. They come out of prison in Kentucky. I don't know about the other prison, right. but in Kentucky. They done fucked around. A lot of them done been fucked. And they own it, they done suck dicks and all this, they come right out. You know, whatever you do is on you, you know. They get these girls. And they come right back out here in the streets on all that front shit, you know. And I since I've been out, I'm out of prison now. And since I done been out, I'm married and shit, you know. My wife, we be sitting on the porch. Motherfuckers come up, motherfuckers I ain't even thought about. Come up at her. Is that Felice? I said, yeah. What's up, dog? Nigga, hey. I said, this is my wife, Darlene. So they go, I mean, my wife. And, and so they be like, hey, your husband, you know, he's a good man. He saved my life and all, and all that shit. And all that. And a lot of them, I won't say shit about them. You know, that's in the past, man. I'm not going to put your business out here in the street unless you get out here and do a lot of fronting and shit, right? You know, I had one front the other day. Uh, about, about a month ago, uh, he killed a motherfucker in prison. And so he's out here. I happened to get a job. 
and this motherfucker's running his mouth about how tough he is and shit, right? He had everybody work around him coming to me and say, hey, man, you need to talk to your little buddy, man. He's, hey. I said, what? Man, this motherfucker said he was whooping shit in prison and all that. I said, hey, he killed the motherfucker. I said, he did. I said, what? He said, uh, you was the only motherfucker. He ain't never fought, but he know he can whoop you. I said, whoop who? <laughs> he said, you, I said, he didn't say that shit. They say, yeah. So I went to him in front of him. I said, bro, you run around telling motherfuckers all this shit you did in the penitentiary, and who you killed, and yeah, you killed a motherfucker, you know? And you will fight, but you can't whoop me. Plus, you a bitch. You know, you won't put it out there? I was in there when you sucked dick, took it in your ass. You know, you even wanted me to be your man, but I didn't want you. I said, I'm lying. He turned his back and said, you win that, brother. And didn't say nothing else, right? And I hated to do that, but, you know, sometimes you, you, you step up to motherfucker. And I'm a real motherfucker. I keep it 100. One 100, I keep it gutter. I don't give a fuck about what any motherfucker think about me, right? And because anybody got something to say about me, I got something to say about them, you know, so we can we can go there, you know. I mean, what 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 sense would it make for a prostitute to say that somebody that uh, have sex with me, he's a dog? Well, what about what you do? Uh, what does a, a motherfucker baby raper look like running his mouth towards somebody? See, in prison, we had a cold in us. As long as you wasn't a wreck and wasn't the police and you didn't do that baby raping shit, hey, we ain't got no love for you, you know, as long as you keep it real, right? But them motherfuckers that do all that other shit, yeah. But I, I want to, since I've been there, I done had a lot of people uh, confront me. Say, oh, you the booty man. You the booty man, you the, oh, fuck you. I said, I'm what? Say, you, are you the booty man? I saw your documentary, this and that, all that shit. You know, I said, what you want to do, suck my dick? I, is that what you want me to do, fuck you in your ass? Oh no, uh, I was just saying, man. I like the I like the documentary, all that bullshit. Well, here's what I want to tell all my young kids, man. Because even though I'm up in age now, I still got my youngness. And yeah, we gonna we gonna cut it right here after this. Go ahead, go yeah. explain. I want all my young niggas to know throughout the whole country, bro. Hey, you gotta watch yourself. When you go in them places, your best friends are set you up. I've seen that so many times. Motherfuckers will sell motherfuckers in our. You know, you come in the penitentiary, think a motherfucker's gonna ride with you, die with you, and all that shit. But you don't know when you came in, the motherfucker you think is gonna ride him down, he done already been bitched out. You know. And when you go in our. You don't give a fuck about what people think about you, bro. I don't give a fuck about what nobody think about. I know who I am, right? Nigga, and like I said in that first interview, nigga, I'm a warrior for real. But warrior or not, you can put King Kong in the penitentiary, and I bet you he fucks some ass in her. You know, if he do 40 years in her, he gonna fuck some ass, right? And... So I'm not sitting here asking for sympathy uh, for you to uh, uh, 
look at me any different from how you look at I don't give a fuck how you look at me. I tell a person in a heartbeat. I hear somebody say, you know, one day I got a lot of respect for you. I said, no, keep your respect. I don't need a shit. They don't put food on my table, clothes on my back, I shoes on my feet. So your respect don't mean shit to me. Whether I got it, I don't have it. And that's what I'm telling every one of you listen to this shit. I don't give a fuck what you think about it. Yeah, I did it. But I ain't never took it. Didn't have to take it. Ass fell in my lap. I had motherfuckers sitting on his dick. You know. And yeah, there got to be a man to take all this, right? Let's let's save a little bit for him next time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is Big Lee, Hustler Spirit. We interviewing Fleece. We're going to get right back at him, too. It's another, another interview. I'm going to drop these little snippets, and we're going to get right back to the interview. Y'all have a good day.